this is the website where you're going to be able to get textures from these are all free by the way royalty free cost free um, copyright free so there's no issues in using any textures from this website you will however need a membership account and unfortunately I don't remember mine um, let's see if I remember it I'll just hide it off screen Did not forget it. Probably, yeah, there we go. Okay. So you'll need to make your own membership account. It's free. You can download 15 megabytes a day, but you won't even reach that uh, with what we're doing. And then I'm going to look up wood texture on the left hand side. So there's lots of different textures here that I can get. And some of them are going to be better than others. Now, this looks like a pretty good kind of crate box texture that I'm looking at here. So I'll grab that. And in order to use this, I don't really need all of these. Um, I might grab this one here. It's a 1600 by 1080 res image. And in SketchUp, there's not really any big issue with using uh, non, you know, power of two uh, textures. So this one looks like a good bit because it's got some bars on it that I can use as well in different places. So I'm going to grab that one, just the medium one. Um, actually, I might grab the small one as well. So it should download here. And then if I go back to SketchUp, so I've downloaded my image, I go back to SketchUp, I click on this button here. What I'm going to do is add a material. This button here will create a material. I'm going to call it wood. And I'm going to open an image. Now, this should be in downloads. So let's find downloads. Downloads. that it's not the right downloads folder there we go and downloads wood plank small click open and that gives me my wooden plank there now what's going to happen here is I don't want the base measurement to be 84 inches wide Okay, I'm going to bring it back to about two inches, or maybe three inches actually, three uh, by three. Okay, three will do, and then that'll set the other one up fine. Um, I might make the smaller one three, and click OK. Now from here, I'm going to need to go into my component because I want to do this uh, individually. If I do it all at once, I'll show you what will happen. I'll click that. I'll click that there. It's not really where I want things to be. It's not a big deal, um, but I do want to be able to position things better. So I'm going to go in and do it individually. So here, I'm going to go and paste that on there like that. I'm going to make some modifications to this. So if I right click on here and go texture, I can click position and I get this weird tool set with these little bits on it here. This red one allows me to move the position of the texture on that face. So I can get it lined up a bit more. The green one allows me to scale it. It also allows me to rotate it. So you have to be a bit careful when you're scaling and rotating this one. I'm going to move that down so that the bar is not at the bottom down there. So that's that texture there. Done. Now I'm going to grab the eyedropper tool. The eyedropper has disappeared but if I click this and then hold down alt on my keyboard or click this button here I can select this face and then I can paint other areas. Now sometimes like the top here it's going to look a bit funny so I'll have to fix that up. But I'll go around here and paint that. That looks fine. Rotate around here. Paint that one, that also looks fine, and the back area when I paint that should look fine too, but it's already been done. Okay, so that looks fine. The top ones looks funny, and the bottom one will look funny as well because they're on different axes, so they look a bit weird. So what I'll need to do with that one is right-click, texture, 
position and change the position of that so that it looks more um, proper like that there and then I'll rotate back to the top and do the same with the top one and if you think this is fiddly uh, you haven't seen any actual texture mapping done proper yet that will take a long time <laughs> so this this here is it's fairly quick compared to unwrapping the whole texture and painting it all by hand now I'd want to try and get those lines there to match up so texture position try and get those lines to match up like that so that it kind of runs from there to there and that looks fine I could make it run the opposite direction as well now this bit here right, go into there and click that I'm going to paint that except that looks weird like that so what I want to do is rotate that texture so I get the texture position and I grab the green one and rotate it until it's at a 45 degree angle like that there I can make it I can scale it up make it a bit better change the position so that that plank of wood goes across there like that and that's that bit done now if I grab that with the eyedropper tool so hold alt and grab that bit there I should be able to paint that on most of the others now some of them will need to be rotated in a different direction you can see that one turned out fine there that one there is going to be fine no that one's not that one there should be that one's okay just depending on which way I actually made the the bit go so that one's all right and there should be one more no I've done all of them okay so with these last ones I want to texture position and rotate that position so it's to the right like that and move it maybe move it a little bit more like that and then I can copy that one so hold that down and copy that to those other ones that were around the wrong way which is I think only one or two there's only this one here so I can just paste that on there and that goes to the proper direction now I'll grab this one again and paint in here and in here and do that with all of those other sides because it doesn't really matter which way those bits run like that and while I'm at it I can paint those bits down there too it should pick up the direction that I want those things on you see that it's kind of matching up there it might not match up perfectly on the sides but also unless uh, someone decides to break this game down frame by frame and analyze all the pixels um, it's not even going to matter in most cases so I just go through and get all these bits here done rotate around it's much easier with a mouse because you can just use the middle mouse button to rotate that's a bit weird there so that would need to be changed um, I can click on it texture reset position and that'll fix it up and then I've got almost done um, a crate now this crate here I'm not too happy with this bit of the texture because it does look a little bit out of place so what I might do is texture position move it a bit to the left to get rid of that darker brown color that's there and same with this side here texture position move it to the right get rid of that darker patch that's there and this bit here texture position move it up so the next bar is showing instead of that one color bar it's a bit different to all the others so there I've got a crate there are a few issues in there this bit here texture reset position that will fix that a bit texture reset position now you can spend ages on this but sometimes it's just not necessary to do that because as a crate that looks pretty decent and in a game it's not going to look too bad especially when it's got some light maps on it and some shadows we can view shadows on it we can turn off the edge style in here and turn off the profile to get an idea 
of what it might look like in a game. Don't worry too much about the sharp edges on there. It looks like there's some kind of glitch down here. I'm not sure what that would be. Let's see. No, it's just a graphics glitch. There's nothing wrong with it. That's weird. It's just a bit of a graphics glitch there. Uh, so that's my crate done. In the next video, um, I am going to make the second part of this crate, which is a destructible version of it. And the crate's going to be fairly easy since all the sides are the same. But other objects will not be so easy to actually create destructible versions of because you'll have to create, kind of split it up into three or four parts and export separate models for each one. So for this one, last thing I'm going to do, plugins, center on origin. I think it already was, and that's done. I can export that as a 3D model, which I already did before. Uh, no, I didn't actually. Great box options. Make sure that export only selection. If there's nothing else in the model, then that's not an issue. Um, make sure that texture maps is okay, and click export. In the next video, I'll just import that into Unity quickly and show you uh, some stuff to do with light mapping.